Before we start, have you all listened to and subscribed to our new podcast, Death in the Afternoon? The first episode is called My Roommate, The Corpse. And it's out this week, wherever podcasts are potted. Pod, potted, pod, podtificated? I was gonna save this announcement until the end, but none of you are gonna be particularly perky by the end of this video. Just fair warning. London in the year 1810. A crowd gathered before a low stage at number 225 Piccadilly Street to see the exhibition of a female specimen from Africa, the Hottentot Venus. There was a cage on the stage similar to one that would be used to hold a bear. And much like a performing bear, the woman was presented to the audience by a handler and forced to parade back and forth for the gawking audience. At one point, the woman refused to come out of her cage. When this happened, the curtain was momentarily drawn and the handler raised his hand menacingly. After that, the woman was, according to a reporter, perfectly obedient. This type of performance was Saraki Sarah Bartman's life in Europe. She was an African woman stolen from her native South Africa and exhibited as a not quite human being. The final years of her short life were dictated by the men who saw her as nothing more than a possession to bring them wealth and fame. This is not going to be a fun episode of Iconic Corpse. There's a lot of whimsical corpse stories out there and this is not one of them. Boy, howdy. But we hope to honor Saraki Bartman and hopefully help her to be remembered as a woman, not a body. Saraki Bartman was born in 1789 and was part of the Khoikhoi tribe in South Africa. This was not a great time to be a Khoikhoi, as guerrilla wars were being waged against her people by Dutch colonizers, wars that ultimately slaughtered her ancient tribe. It's believed that Bartman had a husband that was murdered by a Dutch colonist and a child that died in infancy. Bartman was sold as a slave to a white farmer named Peter Cesar and brought to Cape Town. It was in Cape Town that she was given the name Sarchi, the Dutch diminutive of Sarah. In the spring of 1810, Cesar's brother Hendrik and an English ship surgeon named William Dunlop visited Cesar in Cape Town. They were immediately fascinated by Bartman, primarily her genital features and her large behind, which were common to the Khoi Khoi, but strange and inhuman to the Europeans. Most likely what happened here is one Cesar brother sold Bartman to the other Cesar brother to take to England. Although Hendrik Cesar claimed that he negotiated a contract with Sarki herself, a contract that fairly promised her wealth and fame in England and passage back to South Africa. And I think we're pretty clear that that didn't happen, right? No evidence of that fair contract was ever found. <laughs> Surprise! More on that later. On March 20th, 1810, Cesar, Dunlop the surgeon, and Bartman boarded a ship to England. Bartman never saw South Africa again. When Bartman arrived in England, it was an unstable time for African people. The slave trade had been abolished three years earlier in 1807, but not slavery itself, meaning some black people moved through English society's upper and middle classes, but the majority were slave servants kept in this gray area and living in poverty. Upon landing in London, Cesar and Dunlop immediately tried to sell Bartman to the Art and Natural History Museum. The museum declined the human, but did buy the giraffe pelt that Cesar and Dunlop had offered. Dunlop feared he had made a huge mistake, but Cesar was unfazed, confident he could make money off Bartman as one of the many freak shows popular around London at the time. And he wasn't wrong. People came to the show at number 225 Piccadilly Street for many reasons. To gawk at the first koi koi woman in England, to click their tongues in disgust, or to satisfy a sexual obsession many had with African koi koi or Hottentot women. Cesar had almost immediate success with his exhibition. Though there is no record of how Bartman felt about her exhibition, journalists noted that at one show, Bartman pled tearfully with her keeper not to be forced to dance for the audience. She indicated she was in pain, that she was ill, but the keeper only raised a bamboo pole at her, forcing her compliance. At the end of 1810, a leading abolitionist persuaded the King's Bench to hear a case questioning whether Bartman had consented to be brought to England to be a performer or if she had been coerced. 
In court, Cesar claimed that Bartman had happily come to England, that she had signed a contract willingly. She was stoked to go. Remember that contract from earlier, the one that nobody had ever seen? So Bartman's direct voice, her words, are not part of the court records, only translations by an interviewer. And the interviewer said that Sarki wanted to be in England. She did not want to return to South Africa and was indeed happy. But most historians believe it's highly unlikely that Bartman, a Khoi Khoi born in Dutch colonized South Africa, actually believed herself to have this agency, believed herself to be free. That was just out of the realm of reality for her. There was likely fear she would be returned to slavery in South Africa, and we'll probably never know Bartman's true thoughts. The court ended up ruling in favor of Cesar, though he was issued a warning against indecency and ordered to stop exhibiting her. From here, Bartman's life is even more unclear, so I'll do my best to piece it together. After touring her secretly around Britain, César and Bartman appeared in Paris three years later when she was about 24 years old. César promptly sold Bartman to an animal trainer by the name of Ro, and they never saw each other again. She's finally free from César! Woo! Oh no, gets worse? Okay. Once again, Bartman, now the first Khoi Khoi in France, drew excited audiences. But this time, Parisians focused distinctly on her as exotic and a sexual object, her genitals and famed animal libido. Adding further to the image of Bartman as subhuman, Roe put a collar around her neck and exhibited her from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. alongside a big black bear. After hours, wealthy Parisians could pay to have Bartman appear at their parties. She was likely the victim of sexual assault at the hands of Roe and his clients. It was during this time that Bartman caught the eye of biologist Georges Cuvier. Cuvier wished to sketch every inch of Bartman in order to use her as proof there was some missing link between apes and humans. Bartman, however, refused to expose her genitals to him, much to his chagrin. In the winter of 1815, Bartman died of an unknown disease. No death certificate seems to have been issued. The commonly believed narrative is that her death is attributed to alcoholism and life as a sex worker, or forced sex worker, but there's no proof of this. Wouldn't you turn to drink, honestly? I don't even drink, but I need to drink just talking about this. Barely a month after Bartman died, Cuvier finally got his way. He obtained her body and set to work. Finally able to examine her genitals, Cuvier made a plaster cast of her corpse before dissecting her. Cuvier removed her brain and genitals, preserving them in jars. Then he boiled down the rest of her flesh and preserved her skeleton. What remained of Bartman was then displayed at the Musée de l'Homme, or Museum of Man, until 1974, when public outcry forced the remains to be removed and placed in storage to be forgotten. It wasn't until 1994, when Nelson Mandela was elected as president of South Africa, that he requested the repatriation of Bartman's remains. However, the French weren't having it. Basically, they were afraid if Bartman's remains were sent back to South Africa, it would not only open a Pandora's box of having to return artifacts they stole from around the world, but it would also require reckoning with the race-based science that so much of Western knowledge is based on. So it wasn't until 2002, 192 years after Bartman left South Africa, that her remains were returned home and buried. She was buried in the Eastern Cape close to where it was believed she was born. And that is the story of Saraki Bartman, a woman sadly defined by her body, both in life and death. We honor her today as a human woman and so much more than an iconic corpse. Who would you like to nominate for our next iconic corpse? You were all asking for Saraki and now everyone's in a great mood. Thanks. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Boy, howdy.